lectures and I'm going to be answering question one of the evaluation section which is in what ways does your media product use, develop or challenge forms and conventions of real media products? So basically, do we go against or do we use the conventions of other thriller films? So to start off with, we are going to look at the, well, the sound used. So for the, um, for the first and final act of our short film, we um, use fast-paced, non-diegetic music. And this is quite a typical convention of a, the, the thriller film genre. I mean, it's parallel music because it's a tense chase scene. That's why we've got tense, sort of like suspenseful music. The inspiration which we've taken this from is from many films like The Rear Window, which we have looked at, by Alfred Hitchcock, he uses a lot of non-diegetic, suspenseful music in his films. And then another really good choice of film which we took inspiration from was from The, the Dark Knight Rises, the Batman film, by Christopher Nolan. And basically we looked at that in our research and plan, and in the chase scene with like, obviously chasing it uses the sort of same similar music we have which we use quite a lot to inspire the way our music was composed. Then, next, we, um, more typical conventions that we use were in the diegetic sound, like with the dialogue between our protagonists of Jason and Katie. Uh, the dialogue between the protagonists is uh, like apparent in all films we research. To name a few, like um, The Ghost Writer, Seven, Science of the Lambs, Pulp Fiction. Then there is the digest sound of the gun cocking and of like the bike in the background. The bike's like urban sound, you get that in a lot of films. And then like a really good point where the gun cocking is like highlighted in films would be in the Mercurian candidate. Like when Raymond cocks a sniper rifle to shoot the pres president candidate towards the end of the film. Or see the sound of the digest sound highlights that and shows that this is a threat, this is suspenseful, we gotta like hold up a minute, is he actually gonna do it? And we sort of used that in our film with the part when Jason cocks the gun in Act 3. You right, man? How's your day? Uh, you know, same old, same old. The usual. <laughs> Um, and not, then talking about characters, we used a silent antagonist, which is against the typical conventions of thriller films. Like, when a silent, silent antagonist is present, it's normally more in horror films, like The Little Girls in Shining, which we researched, or Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th. But the, the positive of having this, even though it's against the conventions, is that it adds a lot more sort of fear into the audience, like, why is he not speaking? It makes him seem more menacing and makes him panic more. <laughs> then lastly, in the uh, second act of the flashback in Jason and Katie's house, the non diegetic music changed to a more mellow and calm sounding music of like pianos and other such instruments like guitars, violins. And then um, this isn't really a typical convention of thriller films because there's most of the ones we, most of them, if not all of the ones we researched, had it so, like, they wouldn't cut to some nice downbeat mellow music, then back to the intense one in a chase scene. They'll go all the way through the action scene doing the intense one. The positive of us using this, even though it's against the typical conventions, is the fact that it's sort of like, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, is the fact that it sort of gives a break for the audience, so like they're watching the intense chase and it cuts to this nice and slow bit and they're like, oh, 
okay then, yeah. And they sort of just sit there, get into it a bit. And I was getting into the characters and stuff, and then when it cuts back, like when you see the mysterious biker again, and it cuts to the intense chase music, the audience are like, oh, no, and it catches them off guard, and they really, like, get engaged in it and really worry, worry what's going to happen. Okay, so now the characters in our film. The protagonist of Jason has a mix of typical conventions and aspects of his character which are against the typical conventions of a thriller film. For starters, the typical conventions he does have is the fact that the audience doesn't need to be explained, the fact that he can handle himself, the fact that he has um, the ability to run away from his pursuer, the antagonist, the fact that he can outsmart him, so the fact he's intellectual, and the fact he can handle a gun. Um, this is like in many a thriller films, for example, the character of Jules in Pulp Fiction or the character of Detective Mills in Seven, these characters have great intelligence and obviously can use guns, they are physically fit, and the audience accept that and it doesn't need to be explained they are like this. Like, obviously in our film, they might think, how can he do that? He's an average Joe. But, um, obviously, in our story, and later on in the film, you do realise that he's actually part of the Secret Service. So this obviously explains it. Part of his job means he can do this. Um, the, some things we have which were against the typical conventions is the idea of his character having a memory loss. Because um, this is used, obviously, in the thriller film Memento, which we got a great inspiration from with the main, main protagonist of Leo. But apart from this, it's not used in many thriller films because they don't like having the protagonist as having being in a handicapped position, being in a position of struggle right off the bat. Because, like, for example, the character Brian Mills and Aiken has control at the start until his daughter gets taken, but then has control over the film, like getting the bad guys and the antagonists and stuff. And our character straight off the bat, he's got memory loss, so that's an instant handicap, something against him, like in his good books. Then another way is the costume, the mise-en-scene of the costume our character is wearing. He's he's wearing glasses, which is usually associated with being like smart, but not being physically like built, like being quite weak and not being able to hang yourself well, like Aussie with big well built men in thriller films like Vincent from Pulp Fiction and stuff like that. Next, the um, character of Katie, it's usually quite like, it's quite like a damsel in distress really, which is a typical convention of a thriller film. Um, like, for example, the character of Tracy Mills in Seven, but obviously in our film, it's shown later on that she can actually defend herself quite well and doesn't need to rely on the man to save her fully to an extent but she still has to rely on him slightly so this brings in hints of like characters like Cl Clarice in um, Science of the Lambs which is obviously the female protagonist in that film which she has a lot of power power and stuff um, and then the costume and makeup worn and used by Katie is used to make her attractive and this is a widely used convention for females in thriller films it is done to use the male gaze, which means the men will be more interested to see the film if, like, an attractive woman is using the advertisement. So this is, like, so we could do this to get people to come see our film. And it's also a convention of having a very attractive woman. And, like, this was used in the um, typical advertisement of Pulp Fiction, for example. Having, like, the character of Mia Wallace, like, as the main character on the poster and stuff, even though she may not be the most, like, filmed screen time character in that film it's because she is a attractive lady so it, it does abuse the m a male gaze and gets men to go watch the film but then something against typical convention it of the thing is the fact as i said before that she can defend herself <clears throat> lastly for our antagonist of the mysterious biker, biker as we already established the fact that he is silent is against the typical conventions of a thriller film but the way in which he moves, which is in a menacing fashion, is a typical convention of a thriller film antagonist. We add in, like, 
this to add suspense to the long duration shots of him like in the chase where he's walking menacing because it makes the audience feel on edge be like whoa this character he's a bit scary you know and this obviously establishes the character of having a lot of dominance over our protagonist once again showing the protagonist in the handicapped state from the start and this is quite like the character of jack from the shining i would say Obviously walking slow, but as horror, menacing, making it scary, if you know what I mean. Now, the next convention is setting and location. We have our film set in a remote location in Savaklia. So, Savaklian cu countryside for our op opening and final act of our film. Um, it is set in this position because it is in the middle of nowhere... So you get the sense of the character not being in home, like a territory they know, and it adds to the idea of isolation and panic for the character. Like, what is he going to do? He's not in a natural habitat. And it really puts your audience with the character, like, because they don't, obviously this isn't their natural habitat, because this is aimed at the English, English UK audience. <coughs> Obviously, another reason we had it in Savaklia, set in Savaklia is because um, a lot of secret Asia films, like James Bond, for example, or the Bourne films, they're not in their native country. Like, in the Bourne films, they go to France a lot of the time. And in James Bond films, they're always in Italy and, like, Switzerland and stuff. Like, these aren't their home countries, and therefore, this is a typical convention of these sort of films. Um, but then the fact that it's so isolated and no one else is around is a bit like in the box scene from Seven. Like, that is also used to create suspense, tension, and all that. And this is also a typical convention used quite a lot in thriller films. But the actual location we used was uh, the Bluebell Forest in Little Yeldum. We use this because it has the forest, which looks like it's a vacuum field, in the middle, like, obviously in a Middle Eastern country, and it has a small road on it, which is really good because this small road isn't in private land, so it's free to go on. And because of this, we can ride the motorbike, or moped, because it's not really a motorbike, um, up the road, which obviously is how the mysterious biker got there, why he's wearing his helmet as well to stay hidden, and why he drives down there, obviously for the start of the um, like scene three, act three. Sort of for the start of that point, you know, so... It basically just meant we could use the bike and it really helps establish the character of the mysterious biker. Then, for the flashback scene, we had a setting of a house. And this is like a big family house we were looking at. Because obviously, like, they're, they're a presumed married or just a normal couple of Katie and Jason. And obviously she's pregnant, so they're going to have a child. So this gives off the big idea of a big family house and it is set in England. Um... This is a typical convention of a thriller film, like having a protagonist in a nice red residence before everything goes wrong, like in our film, the mysterious biker turning up, Jason running, um, Katie getting kidnapped. So, like, another film, once again, which this is showing in, is, like, in Seven, like, the big new flat, which the Mills family brought, you know, Tracy and Detective Mills brought in the film, is really nice, big, Fam they were getting ready to make a family as well in that, and that sort of literally fits exactly to ours. And as I said, this is a typical convention, that's where we got our inspiration from. The actual location of this scene was in one of Jack's family, family members' houses. The house isn't necessarily the biggest, but due to the fact we only shot this scene from the kitchen, the audience don't get to see the exterior or the rest of the house, therefore the audience believe that they have a big house due to the Due to like many things, like the costume they wear, which is like they look like well work business people, you know, nice fancy dress because she works for the news and he's wearing a nice suit because he works for the Secret Service, so they look very well. And then obviously some of the props, like they were quite nice looking bowls because they had sort of artistic sort of drawings on them. The glasses were nice, and then also the fact that there's three doors makes the house look like ooh, there's a lot of rooms to go to. So, because of the way we filmed it, it looks like that. When it comes to the aspect of our film camera work, we used a lot of um, camera shots which, and camera movements, which are very conventional to the f thriller genre. 
But um, I like to highlight two which we use, which were like, our most unique maybe shots. Um, for starters, we used the reverse zoom camera movement. Uh, obviously, at the end with the gun, because it zooms out and then zooms back in. So it's, because it, when it zooms out and you finally realise it's a gun, it then zooms in quickly, like the shock of it getting shot. But it doesn't actually have the sound or anything, but it makes the audience believe and think it, the person's getting shot, which we thought was very clever. And obviously, this is we took this inspiration for this straight from the film Jaws. And then uh, more camera work we liked was the point of view shots, because when you're using a point of view shot, it puts the audience in the shoes of the character, so they see what they see, and they like they feel like they're in the mind of him. And that's why we like the point of view shot when you first see the um, mysterious biker, because then you're like running out. You're, so you're like, oh my god, I'm running with, the, I'm am him. Then you like turn left, you're like, there's a bike there. Oh, that must be his. And you turn right, like, what's that? That's the antagonist. And it's sort of like, oh my god. And once again, we could inspiration from that from um, Jaws. But yeah, that's like two camera shots I wanted to highlight. And on to the next aspect. Now I'm going to point out the mise-en-scene mis ideas of costume and props. So, we use very typical and props and costume for thriller films, we did pretty much. Uh, the prop props-wise, we had a gun, which is a prop frequently used in thriller films. To name a few of them off the top of my head, um, which we researched. Memento, The Ghost Writer and Taken. Costume-wise, we used a suit for the antagonist of the mysterious biker to show, once again, the authority and power he has in the opening. We had him with the biker helmet to cover his true identity because it keeps the audience guessing and because you don't want to know the identity because it makes the audience feel uncomfortable because, naturally, if you're not seeing someone's face, it's an unnatural thing. If you're used to seeing people's face, their features, it's sort of how you recognise someone, you know? So when you don't see that, it feels really weird and creeps you out and other antagonists antagonists from films with research which freaked which freaked me out viewing them was like um hannibal lecter in the science of the lambs or john doe in seven so moving on to jason our protagonist the costume of him was casual but fashionable so um this makes him for one look like the audience which makes them more engaged and emotionally um devoted to the character and um but when then in the flashback, when he's wearing his, you know, his professional suit, it makes the audience believe that he's important, you know. So this could be shown in many of films with the suits. Like again, Seven, they wear suits. Some Detective Summers and Detective Mills, and then with the casual wear, like in Memento, he, Leo wears quite ca wears his casual wear. And then lastly, the costume and props used for the character of Katie, um, the prop of the iPhone Six shows that her and Jason have good wealth because the iPhone 6 is a big, new, expensive phone it is. And then um, a costume in the scene is a very professional woman's work outfit which shows that she has a well-paid, uh, important job, which she does. She works at a news station, but she's quite high up in it as we find out later in the film, which also then shows wealth. And also, because of this dress looking like being a very nice pretty dress it adds to the male gaze effect that i pointed out earlier in our film which makes sort of men want to view the film more well generally men obviously i mean yeah now lastly is our storyline which i'm going to point out so the storyline of our film is basically our protagonist jason has lost his memory and from this he doesn't know what's going on so he's trying to work out what's happening, but he has a mysterious man, the mysterious biker, our antagonist, chasing him. And basically, he has flashbacks when he sees the when he sees the mysterious biker from time to time, which goes back to his old life with his wife, who is Katie. And then obviously further on in the film, he finds we find out that he's actually a secret agent. Katie's been kidnapped 
and they're in Savaklia, and then he goes to rescue Katie, and we don't know whether they're gonna he's gonna rescue her or not. But anyway, um, this is a very stereotypical sort of thriller film sort of thing, uh, story. We took a lot of inspiration from the film Memento with the idea of um, in the flashback scene his wife and his happy family, him obviously losing his memory and having flashbacks, and then also in Memento they have the um, the way when it goes from flashback to flashback it's like setting them out in separate parts and even in our opening scene we had it as like three separate acts like the beginning chase where Jason's the victim the flashback and the second chase where Jason sort of becomes the predator no, lo no longer the victim and then we also have qu quite a strong link I would say to the film Taken just because both the protagonists of Prime Mills in that film and Jason in ours are you know secret agents and you know they can kill people handle themselves same with the born identity actually now I think about it that's a very um one which is quite like ours because uh, that's obviously an agent who's lost his memory and that's literally Jason so I've just quickly gone through how our films either challenged or not the conventions of thriller films and I've went through quite a lot of stuff and overall, we have quite a stereotypical film. Like, we stick to a lot of the conventions. But the reason these conventions are in place is be it's because it's what works. It what makes a thriller film good in the eyes of a lot of audience members, which we've learnt from our audience research. So don't change, don't change the working formula. You know, if it sells, if it works, if people like it, why go challenge those conventions unless you know you're going to be good? That's why we cha only challenged a few conventions, which we were really you know had our eyes and we were like yes that's going to work we didn't want to challenge everything or it really wouldn't be a thriller film would it